just awaiting the circuit to clear to get um, our pickups out on the grid. Before then, let's go and catch up with uh, our interviewer, Ewan. Let's see who he's found to talk to in the paddock area. Here we are then in the pits before race three of the pickups. And I've got our second place finisher, Danny Hahn. Danny, your best ever finish in pickup truck racing. Yeah, I'm hoping to move really to get my first podium. Um, done my, this is my second year now in the pickup trucks. Uh, my last year I run with Dave's uh, old full engine pickup truck. So this year we switched to um, the Vauxhall. And I think the Vauxhall sort of suits me. And I think that sort of proves it out there really today. Um, first podium in pickup, second season, but you've done lots of racing before. Just a quick brief overview of your sort of racing career. Yeah, most of my racing career was done on the, on the OC Oval racing. And then I just thought myself like with the, the business and the family, I thought I thought I'd go surfing racing because it suits me, it's good social and it just it just suits me. Just suits me. Now, what did you learn most about trucks last year to now be a successful truck driver as such? I think the trucks, obviously from driving from the super silhouettes is um, it's totally different to truck. You've got to be a smooth driver. And you just gotta be a bit like a lady, you've got to treat it, treat it, <laughs> treat it, treat it, treat it key. <laughs> but yeah, you have just gotta to learn to drive it. That's what you gotta do. Fantastic. And tell us about your team here. Three cars in the garage here. Yeah, I see, I see Dave looks after, I think it's six or seven trucks. He obviously got Pat to the left of me now. I see he's obviously having some setup changes. Gavin behind me, he's in the camp, but it's like four or five hours there is. So it's the best place to be. Now, got a podium, but we got the, the bonnet open. All the wheels are off. What is happening right now? So basically what they're doing now, they're just going to go through, obviously, nut and bolt check everything. Check the wishbone, make sure there's no cracks. Make sure there's no oil leaks around the car just to get the thing ready for race three. So, hopefully, we'll be in a good position for the last race. Now, first ever podium means first ever ballast on board as well. Yes, yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> that's fine. Now, hopefully, it'll be all right because it might level it up from a bit of a heavy, <laughs> heavy lad. So, hopefully, it'll sort of level it out a bit. So, looking forward to it. Danny, best of luck in the next race. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, let's go and see if we can find our winner from race number two ahead of race number three. So I have found our race winner from race number two, and we spoke to him yesterday because he qualified the quickest, Mark Willis, fastest, fastest qualified yesterday and the fastest in race two earlier on. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with myself yesterday. I felt like I let myself down a little bit because um, done a few wrong moves and all that and dropped back and back and back and then sort of go to bed with it on your mind. So I wanted to try and do a bit better today. So I went out there with a bit between my teeth. And uh, I mean, a fantastic racing. Experience counts in pickups, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, like I said yesterday, there's some fantastic boys out there and uh, Pembury's a tricky little circuit to learn, you know, and I think I've been coming here a few years, so that's a, that's a bit of an advantage. But um, I mean, the car's fantastic. It's, at the minute, I can't fault it at all. It's, it's a pleasure to drive it now. Now, talk about experience as a driver, but also tracks. Pembury is a track that we didn't come to for a long time, but you know it fairly well. Is that a massive advantage? I think so. We used to come here quite a bit with the Euro cars years ago when I was a lot younger and um, you know, the, the track craft and learning the track definitely makes a big difference. You know, you can you could spend a day here to learn little tricky circuits like this and gain half a second, maybe a second. So it definitely makes a difference the amount of times that we've been here, I think. Um, but then again, I've got the truck underneath me. The power's just fantastic now. Paul's been back to Paul and I've got plenty of grunt, which I was missing for a few meetings. So let's keep it together for a few rounds. Now, educators again, because we're again, we're fairly new to pick up trucks. You've got the ballast on board now, but where do you, where do you line up for the third race? What's the re reversal grid situation? Right, so they're, they're, they're going to uh, add the points together now from the two heats, one yesterday, one today. And then again, the, the top point scorer from the two heats, they reverse the top six. So oh, wow. if, you, if you're the top point scorer from your two heats, you'll start up six. A bit like I did today from, from qualifying yesterday. So it's a bit complicated to work out, but um, yeah. Hey, we're learning, we're all yeah. learning anyway. So where, where are you starting I on the third know. race? We're gonna, obviously we're gonna be in the first three rows. Mm, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe be inside or outside of row three perhaps. Because that's a fourth and a first so far. Yeah. I mean, it, you've experienced, is this a great weekend for you? What is it looking like um, overall? Yeah, we, so far so good. You know, we've got no damage. Let's just get through round three because we've only got two weeks now until Mallory Park. So, you know, we don't want to go away with here with too much damage. So if we can get through the, the final today and uh, get it back in the lorry in one bit, it'd be nice. I was about to say, you want points to be one at one piece too, don't you? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it'd be lovely. <laughs> Mark, best of luck. Thank you very much. Cool, there we go. Let's go up to Dave uh, Goddard and he's going to talk us through our third and final pickup truck race of the weekend here at Pembrey. Thanks very much, you and the uh, trucks on their way up to the grid then. There's Dan Fisher. He'll be starting from the back after some problems earlier in the weekend. Had a tangle with um, Alan Cooper 
in race one yesterday. Now, apologies, but we haven't been sent a grid sheet for this race. So I'll have to wait and see how they line up when they are out on track here. Because the top six, as we say, it's the uh, based on the results of the two uh, earlier races, but then the top six are all turned around. So it looks like it's Dale Gents, number 83, on pole with 40 Reese Jones alongside him. And on the second row there is number 12, Paul Tompkins. Mark Willis is... Uh, Fairly well up. He's on the outside of the second row. Also look out for George Tariki. I think that's him third in line on the inside. We'll see as they move away. So Gent leads them off. Looks like it's Danny Hun on the second row. And George Tariki and Mark Willis on row three. Those are your top six reverse. And then we've got uh, Pat Kiley. And it looks like Roger Dormer is next on uh, row four. It's Dale Gent in pole position, the number 83, the man from Berkhamsted, looking for his first win of the season. Michael Smith starting towards the back after problems in race two. Dan Fisher right at the back along with Neil Tressler, number 37. He retired earlier on today. Pace truck leads them round. Reese Jones could be in with a chance of his first win of the season here, going from the outside of the front row. Showed some good pace in the first race yesterday to come through from the back for third. Danny Hum with a super start from the front row and almost hung on in front in the race earlier on today. Track a little bit dusty down at uh, Senna. There's Dan Fisher at the back along with the newly liveried truck of Neil Tressel of the 37. Alan Cooper, 72, has had a weekend to forget. He qualified on, well, started from pole in uh, the first race yesterday, but uh, was involved in an incident with Dan Fisher and then uh, spun in the race earlier today. George Tariki, the inside of row three, could be the man to watch. It's rare he uh, leaves a pickup race meeting without at least one win. This will be a 15 lap race. Looks like we've got all 18 pickups out there. Revs will begin to rise. Remember, they uh, don't start racing until they exit Hatchet's hairpin. Just to avoid a pile-up on that first hairpin. So the pace truck is in uh, pit lane. The race starts, but they don't actually uh, turn the power on fully until they head down out of the hairpin. So Dale Gent and Reese jones keep the pace controlled. Sonny Howard, the race director, will be uh, talking to them on the radios turn out of the right-hander attach its head and once they get through spitfires then the pack will be unleashed and away they go okay here we go then up towards Debeni for the first of 15 laps race gets underway with the two pink trucks side by side of Jones and Gents Jones will have the inside line for the left-hander as they come towards the crossing then up to center it's Reese Jones who leads them off then in the number 40 Danny Hun moving up on the outside with that starting system, I would say starting on the inside of the hairpin is a slight disadvantage because the uh, after Spitfires, the next two corners are left-handers. So if you start on the left side of the grid, you've got the line for the crossing and for Senna. It's Jones from Gent. Third is Danny Hun. Then it's Paul Tompkins, number 12. George Tariki is in fifth position ahead of Mark Willis. Then Pat Kiley and uh, Roger Dormer there in the number seven. New livery on his truck for this season. They're all round the first lap okay by the look of things. Reese Jones, number 40, in the lead. Dale Gent's going to try and have a look as they go down into the hairpin. I don't think he's going to be late enough on the brakes. No, he doesn't get up alongside the uh, number 40 of Jones. Hun in third place. Paul Tompkins ahead of George to Ricky. No problems at all around the first lap. There's Jeff Dixon. We saw him have a spin after a bit of contact with Gavin Pike earlier on. It's Jones who leads the train of trucks round towards the crossing once again. Dean Tompkins trying to move up to challenge Roger Dormer. He's had a mixed weekend. Dean Tompkins had a couple of spins yesterday. He putting a wheel wide onto the dust there. That was Pat Kiley as they headed down the short straight into Brooklands. Down the back straight they go. Dale Gent trying to close on our race leader. 
as Jamie Liptrot and Alan Cooper under fire from the welcome returnee Jeff Simpson trying to make a move on Cooper there. Simpson, the veteran hot rod racer, doesn't quite uh, manage to get through. Dan Fisher behind, then it's Pike, Dixon and Tressler. Up the inside, here comes Dale Jens having a look as they go into Hatchet's hairpin. Does he get the overlap? He's just got room there on the inside. He's going to take the lead as they go through the hairpin. Dale Jens has done it. Good move by the pole sitter in the 83. Rhys Jones trying his hardest to fight back and retake that lead. Danny Hearn is there in third place, holding off Paul Tompkins, George Sirikki, and in sixth position, it's Mark Willis. And Mark Willis has had the fastest truck this weekend, the man from Iver. Danny Hunt under fire from Paul Tompkins now for that third position. He's having a look on the inside at Brooklyn's under braking, and the 12 truck will go through past the Scrapco machinery. Forces uh, Danny Hunt to go wide over the grass there. He loses that to Tariki and Willis as well. Danny Hunt too wide there out of Brooklyn's, and he goes down to sixth place ahead of Pat Kiley in the grey pickup truck. I remember when David O'Regan was racing these trucks, he was sponsored by Parcel Force. So you get your parcels delivered quickly in one of these pickups, wouldn't you? Down the straight they go. Dale Gent moving to defend here. His dad, Mark, was a top oval racer in hot rods in the UK and uh, on the continent. Oh, and a tangle there. Pat Kiley into the back of Mark Willis. And Willis, I think, has been caught by uh, Danny Hun as well. Kiley off on the outside, but I think Mark Willis was hit um, in the side there by Danny Hun as well. Now, Hun's got away. Mark Willis rejoining. They're all able to keep going, fortunately. It looked to me as though Pat Kiley missed his breaking point there and hit the back of Mark Willis. See if we can uh, see that one again. Dale Gent slides his way through Brooklyn's there in the lead, ahead of Reese Jones. Paul Tompkins is there in third place with George Tariki now on his tail. Disaster for Mark Willis. Let's have a look again there as they came into Hatchet's head. In the leaders went through, but it's further behind them. Yes, Pat Kiley uh, a little too optimistic there, and there we see just on the right of your picture Danny Hun. May have pulled up just in time to avoid uh, Mark Willis. He may have just caught his passenger door. Well, they've all managed to uh, continue, fortunately. And it's Dale Gent still under a lot of pressure from Reese Jones for the lead of this race. Here's Tariki on the inside at the hairpin, side by side with Paul Tompkins trying to take third place away. Paul is having on none of it, though, and the number 12 just about keeps its nose in front. Side by side for the lead over the crossing. It's Dale Gent who holds it, looking for his first win of the year. Tompkins still third ahead of Tariki splitting into pairs in this pickup truck championship race. Roger Dormer's up into fifth as a result of that tangle attach its hairpin. He's going well. Tariki goes to the inside of the number 12 as they go down the straight towards Brooklands. He's going through. A little bit of rubbing on the way through there. Tariki gets through into third position. They were over two seconds behind the uh, two machines at the front, though, Jens and Jones. Next in fifth is Roger Dormer. Dean Tompkins is sixth. Tom Hutchins up into seventh. Newcomer this year. He's going well ahead of uh, the recovered Danny Hunt. So there's the 39. So he may have uh, managed to slam the brakes on and pull up to avoid Mark Willis there. There go the leaders. And Rhys Jones try and make a move. That's, uh, two pickup lengths behind Dale Jensen at the moment. They were separated by 0.3 of a second at the line. Four and a half seconds further back is uh, George Tariki in third place ahead of Paul Tompkins. And then this quartet fighting the fifth. Dormer, Dean Tompkins, Hutchins and Hun. Still in that order. Danny Hun trying to close back up. He wants another podium, if not his first win. Ninth behind them is Michael Smith from the back after those problems in race two. And Dan Fisher from the back of the grid is up into 10th position. I think we've lost um, Alan Cooper. Yes, he's dropped out of the race, number 72. He's had, uh, well, it started off promisingly with pole position for race one, but it's turned into a nightmare weekend for the 72. He's out of it. Pat Kiley's going again at the back. Mark Willis is still running as well. It's the leader's head up and over the line. Four of a second is the lead margin. So here comes Tom Hutchins having a look on the back of uh, the number 21 of Dean Tompkins, who holds him off. Swing their way through the hairpin. Danny Hunt to the inside now, trying to attack Tom Hutchins, but he won't get through there. Dean 
Tompkins threatening uh, an overtake on Roger Dormer. Roger Dormer, one of the best we've seen him run here in fifth position. A little bit sideways out of centre, the right-hander there. Dean Tompkins ready to uh, make a move. He won't get room on the inside, though. Danny Hun shadowing this trio all the time as he tries to move back up. I can't see any damage on the front of uh, Danny Hun's car. There's some damage there to the front of Jamie Liptrot in the uh, number two car. He's hit something. We didn't see what it was, though. Neil Tressler ahead of him in the 37. This is the battle for 13th place. Pat Kiley on his way back up the order passes Jeff Dixon, the man from Hales Owen in the West Midlands, a former firefighter. Here's the fight for fifth, and Danny Hun runs wide onto the grass there, exiting Hatchet's hairpin. Less than a second between the two leaders. It's still Dale Gents from uh, Reese Jones. They've pulled clear of George Tariki in third. He's now dropped Paul Tompkins. And then we've got this fight for fifth position. We're on the eighth lap of the race now, so we're past half distance in this 15 lap up. Seven and a half laps is half distance. Roger Dormer hanging on ahead of Dean Tompkins in the 21. A little bit wide there through. Brooklands, the white uh, 21 car, chased by Tom Hutchins. This is the best we've seen him run his first season in the pickups in seventh place. Through towards Honda curve they go. The lead gap has increased slightly. It's over a second now between Dale Gents and uh, Reese Jones. Danny Hun running wide there, coming out of Honda curve. In the background there, Dan Fisher is now up to ninth, and he's got ahead of Michael Smith. So is Smith's truck struggling again, I wonder? Slide the way through the head. Very close between these four. There's the leader. You can see Dale Gent has pulled away slightly from uh, Reese Jones. Dale Gent's in this truck that used to be black with uh, red trim. It's livery. It's a very uh, striking pink and uh, green paint job on there now. Jones has dropped over a second behind now in the pink number 40. So Ricky still third ahead of Paul Tompkins. Here's a battle further back. Mark Willis trying to make his way back at the order. Has got ahead of Jeff Simpson. Mark would have raced against Jeff Simpson when he won that first title back in 1998. So back in those days was uh, the likes of Pete Chambers, who now races in historic cars. Also Kevin Clark. We now see him in uh, British Endurance sometimes. Legendary Barry Lee, whose son Freddie was also a pickup truck champion. The leading lady of pickups was Kelly Jane Wells. On the outside goes Danny Hunt. Can he take uh, Tom Hutchins here for seventh place? Roger Dormer, a little bit uh, wide there on the exit. And just to hold off Dean Tompkins, though. Danny Hunt has got round the outside. He's up into seventh place now, the number 39. There's Paul Tompkins all on his own now in fourth position because George Tariki has pulled away. Not catching the leaders, though. Dale Gent leads by just over a second ahead of Reese Jones. And Roger Dormer slide, slideways out of uh, centre there, you could say. Trying to get up the outside is uh, Danny Hunt. Trying to take the 21 of Dean Tompkins. Goes for the inside, now switches back to the outside. Using his hot rod racing knowledge to try and take the outside run. Nearly clips the back of Dean Tompkins there as he goes over the curb at... Uh, Carter's curve into Honda curve. Still your leader is Dale Gent. It's uh, up to over one and a half seconds now. Gent is pulling away. Pulling out is Danny Hunt to try and pass Dean Tompkins. Who at the same time goes for a move on uh, Roger Dorman. He'll send it up the inside into the hairpin. And uh, Danny Hunt clips the back of, uh, clips the tailgate on Dean Tompkins' uh, truck there, you could say. Dorma holds the place. They're kind of bottled up behind Roger Dorma now. Tom Hutchins hanging on behind them in the red and white, number 29. Only four laps to go this time for Dale Gents, number 83. To Ricky on his own in third, Tompkins on his own in fourth. Main focus is this fight for fifth position. Here comes Danny Hunt. Is he going to get the Brooklyn, there at Brooklyn's up the inside? No, he's not. Got to be mindful that Tom Hutchins is right behind him as well. Here comes Hun again. Again, Tompkins fends him off. Mm -hmm. 
couple of retirements. Alan Cooper has won. Jamie Liptrot has uh, pulled into the pits as well as up the inside comes Danny Hunt out of Honda Curve. And he finally gets the move done on Dean Tompkins. Now Dean's stuck on the outside. He's trying to move to cover. Oh, excuse me, Danny Hunt, he says. What was that all about? Well, I think Dean Tompkins was trying to move to cover there from um, Tom Hutchins trying to make it up the inside into the hairpin. That's allowed Dan Fisher to close on them as well, but uh, it resulted in uh, Dean missing his braking points and uh, pushing Danny Hun onto the grass. Not sure uh, what that was all about. Danny Hun is fighting back. He's clearly not happy there. Closes back up on uh, Dean Tompkins. He'll go for the inside at Brooklands. And he goes through. I'm wondering if Dean Tompkins gave him the place back there because uh, of that little contra Tom going into Hatchet's hairpin. I don't think that was intentional by Dean Tompkins. Oh, oh not saying that, he dives back at the inside there. Wait and see what happens between these two. Dan Fisher getting involved as well. He started from the back and has come through into this little scrap. Behind them is Michael Smith. Mechanical problems affecting his weekend earlier on. Won the first race yesterday, failed to finish race two. Oh, Danny Hun's now gone straight on all on his own. Maybe he's got a problem with the brakes. Through go Smith and Willis. Yeah, I think Danny Hun may be having braking issues there. We'll wait and see whether he continues on. A couple of laps to go now. Dale Gent is now over two seconds clear. Meanwhile, we haven't forgotten about the leaders of uh, Reese Jones. George Dericke on his own in third. And now Dan Fisher was ahead of Dean Tompkins. They're both... Oh, that was, uh, well, very graceful, if nothing else. Synchronised sliding there through centre. Michael Smith moving up on them now. Dean Tompkins is all over the place. There's our leader. Dale Gent is well clear now. Jones comes through. Ah, he is still there. His transponder's not working again. That's the uh, same as the earlier race. Two and a half seconds is the gap. A couple of laps to go. To Ricky third, Paul Tompkins fourth, Roger Dormer is fifth, then Tom Hutchins up to six with that uh, little contretemps between the 21 and uh, the 39. And the 21 of Dean Tompkins still holding the place here ahead of Dan Fisher. Nice to get around the outside. There's uh, Mark Willis up the inside, takes Michael Smith. He takes Dan Fisher as well. Good move, Mark Willis. Now having a go at the rather wayward handling truck of number 21, Dean Tompkins. trucks still running out of the 18 that started Tompkins goes wide I think he's in trouble Willis goes through Fisher goes through I'm fairly sure Dean Tompkins has got a problem there he's got Mark Will Michael Smith on his tail whether he got some damage when there was that contact earlier on whether it's damaged the rear suspension he's sliding all over the place the leader though is into his last lap well he held off uh, Dale Gent in the uh, Dale Gent held off Reese Jones in the early stages but uh, Fairly plain sailing for number 83, Dale Gents, on his way to his first win of the season. He's got to negotiate this final lap. Reese Jones in second. Ricky is well back in third. Tompkins, Paul Tompkins, that is, on his own in fourth. Some spectacular tail slides in all three races this weekend. Well, Michael Smith won race one. Mark Willis run race two. In race three, it's going to be the number 83. BP Mitchell Limited sponsored truck of Dale Gents. Here he comes towards Carter's Curve for the final time. Reese Jones, a consistent weekend for him. Good drive through the field yesterday in race one from the back. He's going to have to settle for second place here because round Honda Curve for the final time and up to the chequered flag. It's a first win of the season for number 83. Dale Gent takes the flag. Second goes to Reese Jones, three and a half seconds apart at the flag. And these two are still at it Dean Tompkins and uh, Danny Hunt. A bit of contact between those two during this race. Danny Hun trying to fight back. George Tariki completes the podium and should keep his championship lead. Paul Tompkins is fourth. Fifth goes to Roger Dorm. A great result for him. And sixth, a good result for Tom Hutchins as well. Well done, Mark Willis, fighting his way back up to seventh ahead of Dan Fisher. Dean Tompkins will come over in ninth, just ahead of Danny Hun. Uh, Michael Smith. Have we lost Michael Smith there on the last lap? No, his transponder was late coming through. He was ninth. Apologies there. Jeff Simpson finishes 12th on his comeback. Confirm that result in a moment because a couple of transponders weren't working there towards the end of the race, so it makes the timing up slightly. Jeff Dixon is the final finisher. 
Well done, Dale Gent. A first win of the season for the number 83. Confirm the results of the pickups in a second then. Well done to uh, Dale Gent and Reese Jones. They were nose to tail in the early stages before Dale was able to pull away. All the action was in the pack behind them. Well done to the pickup truck racing championship. Always spectacular wherever they race. Quite rare we see George Tariki go home without a win over the last couple of years, but uh, had to settle for three podiums here, but still keep his uh, championship lead, I would think, once the maths is all done. It's a win for Dale Gents by three and a half seconds in the end ahead of Reese Jones. Tariki in third place, ahead of the rather lonely Paul Tompkins in fourth. The battle for fifth won by Roger Dormer, great result for him, and well done Tom Hutchins up there in sixth position. Mark Willis, after that uh, spin at the hairpin, fighting back to seventh ahead of Dan Fisher. Michael Smith taking ninth, and Dean Tompkins winning his battle with uh, Danny Hun. They were tenth and eleventh. Jeff Simpson from the back of the grid on his return gets the best finish of the weekend in twelfth. Thirteenth goes to uh, Gavin Pike in the number 51. Pat Kiley, after that spin at the hairpin tangling with Mark Willis, ends up 14th. Neil Tressler comes in 15th. And Jeff Dixon was the other finisher. We lost Jamie Liptrot into the pits after 10 laps. And Alan Cooper was also an early casualty. So we can hand down to Ewan to talk to our top drivers. Thank you very much, Dave. Final pickup truck race of the weekend. And isn't it an absolute joy to watch those? So we've got our winners, uh, Dale Jens, Reese Jones and George Tariki with us here. We're going to jump in. Let's jump in with Reese Jones. Second podium of the weekend. Do you want to get a quick drink? Are you OK? <laughs> Looking a bit warm. Um, second podium of the weekend. Um, having a good time, aren't you? Yeah, not too bad. Cars all worked this weekend. We've had quite a lot of grief of it, so... Yeah, come away with a couple of podiums, that's good enough for us. What's been up with it? Uh, just handling problems, really. Uh, it's not had a lot, great deal of rear grip, and then you give it some rear grip and it's got no front grip. So, How, how much, how important is position in these? Because you started first and second, finished first and second. You were the only two cars out in front by an absolute mile for most of that race. Yeah, it was a case of uh, not squabble too much and uh, get as far forward as we could and then see if we had anything in the end, but we didn't, so we just followed home. What have you learnt this weekend for the rest of the season? Uh, just stay out of trouble and uh, keep pick racking up the points. Cool. Well done. Great weekend, mate. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Um, right, let's see if we can get George Tariki in here too. Um, George, third podium of the weekend. Not the three you would have wanted, but still a fantastic time here in Wales. Yeah, yeah it's been a good meeting, really. Yeah, we struggled this weekend with tyres, but yeah, it was a bit better in that one. But obviously the two boys from the front was just gone. What happened? Why did they sort of go away so clearly like that? I think they just kind of worked together early on and got going whilst we was all fighting behind and it was enough to, you know, give them a good lead. So, yeah, it was good. We're still learning about pickup trucks here. How important is slipstreaming? If they, if two guys work together and move away, they, they pulled away by a good 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, when we're like that with drafting, yeah, it does work. And uh, moving into the next round of the competition, what do you take away from Pembrey? Um, a lot of grass, a lot of mud. <laughs> um, that's about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's another good points all for us so going into Mallory it's uh, we're still on the top hopefully best luck for you cheers mate thank cheers, you buddy. cheers George right let's get our race winner um, here he is just having a chat with our um, uh, what do you call them <laughs> a venue commentator <laughs> but he's had uh, went from pole took the win just have a look at the car here Adam whilst we're waiting as you've seen throughout these three races across this weekend, there are several connections and see the dirt and the grass on there. And I can assure you, every time these cars go on track, they are absolutely immaculate. So these are race condition, uh, you can see at the minute. And they are just incredible vehicles. And just while we're still waiting for Dale, it's worth having a look at these cars. And again, we've not seen them up close too many times. And one thing you won't have seen, but we can kind of show you here, actually, when we pull back out to the outside, the doors on these cars, the drivers are actually pinned in by four pins. So you can't just open the door here. You've got to unpin this. They chuck it on the back of the vehicle here, and then you've got to pull the driver out. Now, 
I've got to try and steal Dale Gent because we haven't got all day. We've got a, we've got a British truck racing race to go. So we'll go and stand by him and just wait. Here we go. Use our influence. Um, Dale, just whilst we're on the move here, turn the podium into a win. Fantastic race, mate. Yeah, no, it's just... I'm speechless. Yeah. It's, yeah, from how the weekend has started, it started good with qualifying. Say I made a rookie mistake yesterday in the first race, ran a bit wide and ended up spinning. Had a lot of work to do. And I thought, clear head today, come into it, and let's just just try and get points. And then I say, I didn't know where I was starting for this race. Yeah. And Barbara <laughs> come round and uh, give the, and I was like, I'm on pole. I was like, right, focus, don't mess it up. <laughs> just get your head together. And yeah, no, and it worked well. It, the team as well, prepping the car, James at Relentless, the DLRD setting up, but fantastic job. And uh, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have the equipment what I've got underneath me to do what I've got to do. First win of the season. Was that on your plans coming into this weekend? It was not. I like it here. Every time I've come here, apart from last year, I had a bit of bad luck here last year. We've always had a win here, and it's usually the last race. So, yeah, no, hopefully many more to come, hopefully. We'll, and we'll see how we go at Mallory in a couple of weeks. Now, congrats. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.